Now coming back to the charging and discharging, and uh, so this is the circuit we have used, and the capacitance uh, value of C of the capacitor shown here, it is charging, so let us understand the physics, what is the physics of it, and if you understand this, then the, I think the uh, understanding of different types of DC accelerators will become very simple. So let us say that uh, here, epsilon is the EMF of the voltage source here, the, or we are using battery here. When the uh, circuit is closed or completed, then the capacitor starts charging or it starts storing the energy. Suppose I is the current passing through this circuit which is shown here above and at any time how much charge will be uh, transferred, how much will be the current flowing that and as I explained that suppose Q is the charge transferred or stored in the capacitor and I is the current passing through this circuit then you can use this equation that uh, I into R, that is the R is the resistor value of the resistance and uh, plus Q upon C, that is the voltage developed across the capacitor is equal to the EMF value or the epsilon. So this equation will be for a closed circuit, this expression can be written. Let's see this is equation 1. Now, when the slowly slowly this capacitor will be charged to the full charge value of Q naught then the, once it is charged then the current flowing through this circuit will be zero and in that case the total value, total value of voltage developed across the capacitor will be equal to the epsilon of that source. So you can write that uh, when the capacitor is fully charged, the current is stops flowing and under that condition Q is equal to Q0, that is the maximum value and in that case once it, this condition is satisfied or the uh, capacitor is fully charged, then the current flowing is zero, that means I equal to zero and uh, Q0 of course here is a maximum charge which this C can accommodate. Under that condition Q naught that is maximum charge divided by C is equal to epsilon. So let us say this is equation number 2. Now this from this equation 1 and equation 2 you can yeah, equation and 1 equation and 2 you can write that I into R that is the voltage across resistor plus Q upon C at any time t. We are writing this is equal to Q naught divided by C that is epsilon that is the EMF of the source. This is it. Now if you rearrange it, you can write that 1 upon C into Q minus Q naught is equal to minus I R. Further rearrangement of this can be written as Q naught minus Q is equal to RC and here I have replaced the current passing through the resistor as dQ by dt. Current is nothing but the rate of charge transferred to the capacitor. So this is a, this condition is satisfied at any time t and for a current of I which is flowing through the circuit. If you arrange it, uh, rearrange again with this condition put in the equation, then you can write that dQ divided by Q0 minus Q is equal to dt upon RC. Now this can be integrated, uh, this equation with the appropriate conditions of the limits. And what are the limits? Limit is that at t equal to 0, there was no charge across the capacitor. So Q is equal to 0. But let's say at time t, when the 
condenser is fully charged q is equal to q naught now if you integrate it with this left hand side and right hand side and that is written in this one and uh, you can uh, write with the limit of 0 to q this equation above equation and then uh, you will see that you get is uh, almost like a equation this is almost like a equation that uh, 0 to x dx upon x is upon x is equal to nothing but this integration is log x and of course limits are same so this this is somewhat similar to that and if you do this integration uh, then you will see that we get minus log as this the base is e not the not the uh, base is not 10 but it's still ln it is not log base e and uh, this is q naught minus q plus that is equal to 1 by cr into t so you have integrated this equation so this can be rearranged and it can be written as q naught minus q divided by q naught is equal to e power minus t divided by cr now this is a basic equation for charging and we have to remember this so this is a basic equation which will uh, come again now this relation gives the value of charge on the capacitor at any time t so this is a basic equation for charging a capacitor now here uh, what are the conditions what are the uh, lower and the upper conditions uh, what are the different conditions which can apply here and what is this uh, cr and this cr is basically called the time constant of the circuit and that is a very important parameter normally it is denoted by tau tau is equal to cr and that is time constant of the circuit it's a important parameter and when you are we are uh, uh, designing an accelerator we have to keep in mind this tau value and it has to be appropriately chosen now first condition is that when cr is very small as compared to 1 then the above equation can be written in such a way and the consequence of that will be that q will be q naught very rapidly because that t is much cr or tau is much smaller than 1 or much smaller than t you can write so if you write then the charge uh, transfer to that uh, the capacitor very quickly it will be done so the voltage will be generated very quickly and that is what we want but then there is a uh, some limitations on that other condition is that if uh, cr that means the tau is much much greater than one then the capacitor will take very huge time to charge or to reach the uh, full value and of course the third condition will be that uh, t is equal to tau that means what will happen in a time which is equal to the time constant of the circuit how you define that so if you take that above equation q is equal to q naught and within bracket 1 minus e power minus 1 so e is 2.713 or so if you put that now then q becomes 0.632 q naught that means if you write q divided by q uh, q naught is 0.632 or you can call it that it is 63 percent q is nothing q is roughly 63.2 percent of the maximum charge can be raised to so the time constant is uh, cr which is cr or tau is the time during which charging becomes about 63.2 percent and that is shown here that within two within tau uh, here in this figure we have plotted q as a function of time 
so within the time tau the q has been charged to or the c has been charged to 63.2 percent of the uh, uh, of the q naught which is the maximum charge and uh, we would like to have this time constant very small and uh, of course if you have this as very small then there are other limitations now uh, so this is charging capacitor has to discharge in order to generate the voltage on the terminal so it is charging on the on the on the capacitors which are on the left hand side and uh, the discharging to charge the capacitors on the right hand side which are uh, which are responsible for uh, generation of the voltage across the accelerating tube so here uh, we have to understand that how the relationship goes for discharging of the capacitor so you again take it and again take the same circuit which we have used earlier and see that how the discharging is taking place now here what we have done we have now opened the key which i showed you earlier uh, can we just uh, so the circuit earlier was this is a resistance and there was a key here so now this key has been opened here this is a capacitor so now this is open so what will happen with time this uh, capacitor will lose the charge and the discharging of the capacitor will start and uh, we should also understand that uh, how the discharging of the uh, circuit uh, the capacitor takes place during uh, the discharging the epsilon will be equal to zero because it is disconnected and the equation we can again write the same equation which we followed earlier we can write that r i that is i is the current plus q by c is equal to zero now since uh, since i equal to dq by dt that we can again write we go through the same mathematics and we can again write this equation and uh, so the ultimately by rearranging we get dq by q is equal to minus dt by cr cr is again called the time constant of the circuit and we if we integrate it again now the limits will be different earlier the limits were from 0 to q here now because we are discharging and at t is equal to 0 the q is q naught and from that at any time t it will come to q so the limits are q naught to uh, q dq by d dq divided by q is equal to that is shown here so now you will get a different equation which is q is equal to q naught e power minus t by cr earlier equation in the charging this uh, sec this term was 1 minus this here it is directly q is equal to q naught e power minus t by cr or we can also write if you write cr as tau which is a time constant then q that we charge at any time across or over the capacitor is q naught that was the maximum value uh, with which we started into e power minus t by tau where tau is cr again the time constant of the circuit so we can again apply those three conditions here and one of the condition was that if what will happen at time when it is because one of the most important parameter of in designing this circuit is CR value and therefore we should understand this that what happens when when t is equal to CR or t is equal to tau when t is equal to tau or CR then q will become q naught e power minus 1 or it is equal to q naught by e and as I said that e value is 2.713 therefore it will become uh, 0.368 q naught or you can write q divided by q naught is 
सिक्स एट और इट इज नथिंग बट थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट परसेंट सो हियर इन द केस ऑफ डिस्चार्जिंग द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट टॉ विच इज इक्वल टू सी आर इज डिफाइंड एज द टाइम ड्यूरिंग विच चार्ज ऑन द कैपेसिटर फॉल्स टू अबाउट थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट एट परसेंट ऑफ द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू टू विच इट वॉज चार्ज सो यू विल सी दैट समाइम्स द conditions are contradictory so when you want to understand these things these two equations for charging and discharging have to be considered and they have to be uh, and proper values of rc and tau or the tau has to be taken because you cannot have a very large value of uh, resistance because then otherwise the condition will be different and i uh, or you cannot have very large capacitance or very small even cap so there has to be optimum value and these two equations play very important role in developing the voltage across the uh, across the capacitors and of course the across the terminals which are used to obtain the high voltages in the dc accelerators so these are two equations which have to be taken into account now uh, you might wonder that uh, i so far in the circuit analysis i have used resistors and uh, here i am showing that in the case of uh, cocktot walton of uh, accelerator i was using uh, the diodes and that is because of the iv characteristics of the diode and which are very helpful uh, and you can see that in the forward direction the r value is very small in the pn junction of the solid state diodes that means one side is positive other side is negative and uh, under that forward bias r is very small because the current is easily passing through and that is shown here on the right hand side that uh, with a small voltage itself which is a positive voltage the current passes uh, very high current passes and that is why it is for forward direction and in the forward direction r becomes very small on the other side on the other side on the negative hand side when the uh, when the polarity is reversed it is called reverse bias and under that condition the r is very large and this helps in retaining the charge across the capacitor or retaining the voltage which has developed and these properties of diodes are very useful in developing the voltage so uh, we have to uh, the performance in uh, developing the voltage uh, across the voltage generators is uh, is uh, very important and the diodes play a very important role because of their characteristics now uh, in the beginning i told uh, told you that uh, in the case of subsequent accelerators which are improvements we use uh, uh, in the beginning for example when uh, vandegraaff was first built uh, nitrogen 80% and carbon dioxide 20% mixture was used for insulation of the in order to reduce the corona formation or to reduce the discharge this was used and later on sf6 gas which is a sulfur hexafluoride gas has been used and it is found to be uh, much more uh, useful uh, that is because you can see the properties here that uh, dielectric constant of sf6 is about 2.5 times of that of air that means nitrogen plus oxygen carbon dioxide is nothing but air slightly better than air so that uh, the dielectric constant is about 2.5 times and that precise the reason why the voltage in the case of uh, tandem accelerators or pelotons where sf6 is used uh, you can go to much higher voltages because of this dielectric constant but there is a uh, disadvantage that this gas is five times heavier than the air 
although voltage wise it has advantage you can go to much higher voltages but since it is five times heavier and therefore if there is a little bit leak of sf6 gas it will displace the oxygen in the atmosphere or in that lab and that can create some health hazards and of course some of the disadvantages uh, uh, which are uh, responsible for uh, they are not using nowadays is you can see that it is very heavy displaces oxygen and can create oxygen deficiency so it can be a health hazards reliable one of the thing is that of course there will always be some leakages but uh, that has to be monitored and it so happens that reliable sf6 monitors are not easily available and therefore uh, but you have to use those monitors and therefore most of the time when sf6 monitors are not available you try to use oxygen deficiency monitors because it displaces oxygen so uh, this is equivalent but not exactly same so what you do is that uh, any leakage takes place it displaces oxygen and there will be there will be oxygen deficiency this is also not correct which is also not right and it will it can again cause the health hazards but you can use the oxygen deficiency monitors which are easily available to uh, indirectly find out if there is any leakage of sf6 or another disadvantage is that whenever arcing or corona takes place inside the high voltage terminal it sf6 breaks and one of the component which is s to f10 and this is a very highly toxic compound uh, component and uh, that is uh, that can create uh, not only health hazards but also it eats away some of the components of the accelerator and therefore uh, this is one of the advantage this advantage not advantage this advantage why it has been banned now this uses of sf6 gas is uh, uh, banned and it is discouraged people are discouraged to use sf6 now in accelerators and that is because it can be used as chemical warfare agent and it doesn't give a skin irritation it is inert suppose somebody uses in chemical warfare people will not know uh, that uh, it has been done and uh, little warning of exposure so because it doesn't give any skin irritation then it it does not give any warning because you will not even know that sf6 has been used so it since it can be used to internationally uh, there is a move that it should be completely banned from usage in the accelerator so uh, this uh, this is what uh, i feel now if you understand this uh, this charging and discharging and importance of uh, time constants importance of usage of diodes in the dc accelerators then i am sure that uh, you will be able to design and even operate the dc accelerators very nicely details of these in the van de graaff tandem and peletons will be given in subsequent lectures thank you